you can only record an hour and 30 minutes. So I'm long winded. I'm gonna try to get you out. The time is good. I have 45 minutes to get you out. Amen. How many of y'all know we've been doing a series on the weapons of our warfare, right? Amen. And uh, we're almost done. We have like maybe two more weeks and we'll be done. Amen. And we're gonna move on to something else. But I really feel that this message and this series that we've been talking about is really powerful and it's really going to help you if you grasp what's being said. Amen? Amen. And and you're probably saying, well, Larry, I haven't really learned anything as far as how to fight the devil. You don't need to fight the devil. Right. He's already defeated. Right. Your job Amen. is to stand. Amen. Amen. Go, let me give you an example. We talked about the breastplate of righteousness. Yeah. Well, how, how is that going to help me fight the devil? Because the devil is going to uh, attack you when you make mistakes. And he's going to tell you, you're not righteous anymore. Amen. God doesn't love you anymore. Look at the mistake. You keep doing the same thing and you keep asking God to help you and you still do it. Right. What is that? That's condemnation. Yes. And you know what? The, and you know what? The Bible says to guard your heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible says that he who is not condemned can ask in faith. Amen. He who is condemned cannot ask in faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'll give you an example. For all you people, I, I like to get... Deep and then simple because I want to make sure everybody understands. What do I mean by condemnation? I mean, like Jeffrey, people come up here, not not using Jeffrey, but somebody that doesn't know the the the, the understand the grace and condemnation. People can come up here get prayer, and you know what? You can't receive the prayer. You know why? Because you're thinking about what you did last night. Mm -hmm. I got drunk, Pastor Larry, and I was throwing my guts out, mm -hmm. and I'm here Sunday morning. I don't know how the Lord is going to bless me. <clears throat> Maybe it's quiet. Maybe y'all, that's what all y'all were doing last night. Eh? <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Oh, I, or, or Pastor Larry, I, I, I cuss my girlfriend out. I cuss my wife out before I come to church. How is God going to hear my prayer? See, that's condemnation. That's right. The devil puts guilt on us, the devil makes us shameful. And you know what we do? We don't come to God with faith. You understand what I'm talking about? And the only time that most of us come to God with, to, with faith is when we have this attitude I've been praying all week. I've been seeking the Lord all week. And you know what? Then we have faith. Mm -hmm. But you know what that is? Right. That's self-righteousness. Right. 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 Hoping. Amen. Because you know what? You're boasting in the fact that I know I've been praying this week. I've been fasting this week. I've been coming to church the Amen. whole month faithfully. So I know God's going to hear my prayer. Amen. What are you boasting in your works? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But you know what? When you understand righteousness, you're saying it's not my work. It's his work. Amen. 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 Who's Jesus Christ's work? Amen. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? This church, I love, I always tell you, for y'all that are visiting, why do we name our church a New Covenant Church? Because we're not preaching the Old Covenant. Right, man. The Bible is, bro, I was telling the guys Thursday night at Bible study, I says, the only way, and I preach to them like I preach to y'all, but I'll get a little firmer with them. I says, the only way, guys, y'all are ever going to learn your Bible is to learn that there is an Old Covenant and there is a New Covenant. That is the foundation if you don't understand that, then when you read the Bible, you're not going to understand anything. You're all Amen. with me. Yes. Amen. I'll give you an example. The Bible <laughs> says, forgive others as I have forgiven you, right? right. That's the New Covenant. Notice the language. The New Covenant says, forgive others as I have forgiven you. That's right. Jesus. Under the Old Covenant, this is what y'all been taught. God will only forgive you if you forgive other people. You want God to forgive you, Sister Mary? Then you better forgive other people. Because the Bible says that God won't forgive us unless we forgive other people. That's Old Covenant. Who is quiet in here. <laughs> y'all get what this pastor is saying? Yes, yes, yes. How many of y'all? One day, I haven't taught it completely, but one day I'm going to teach it. Confession of sins. In church, we're taught what? You make a mistake, you confess it to the Lord, He forgives you and washes it away. Yes. That is not taught in Scripture. That's a man-made doctrine. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. Y'all that probably know the Bible well or are decently, why did Jesus die on the cross? Give me the number one reason. For our sins. For our sins. To what? To forgive us, right? Yes. And cleanse us of our sins. Yes. Okay. You just got through telling me that Jesus' blood forgave you every sin. But then you turn around and you say your confession brings about forgiveness. No. Well, which one is it? Amen. That's good. 
Are y'all with me? Because yeah. listen, if all you had to do was confess your sins, and then for in order for God to forgive you, then he didn't have to die on the cross. That's right. That's right. But the Bible said, it's only through the shedding of blood yes. do we find remission. Amen. 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 Why is it in the Old Testament, in, in the time of Moses and, and David that killed Goliath, why is it during that time they had forgiveness for the whole year? Because it went sacrificed the lamb. Because they sacrificed the lamb, right? But they had. But the point is, is that they had forgiveness for the whole year. Yes. They could go and stay in their tent, and they're all right for the whole year. It don't matter what sin they do. It's all right. But as long as they came once a year on the Day of Atonement, then th as long as they covered that, that, that blood would cover for the whole year. Mm -hmm. Church, that's old covenant. How much more the blood of Jesus, who's, 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 yes. the Bible says Amen. blood is greater than that of lambs. Yes. The Bible says we have eternal redemption. Amen. Y'all know what eternal means? Forever. forever. You're redeemed forever. The only time we, we confess our sins is when we kick the dog, cuss the wife, cuss our boss, mm -hmm. right? right? Scratch lottery tickets and don't put none of the offering on this. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, I ordered some church pins with our logo on them. And my grandma said, tell the church that you got them new pins so that they can write bigger checks. <laughs> you know what? Hey, so whenever you write that check when you come to church, you know what it is, amen? It's just a joke. It's just a joke. I want to thank y'all for y'all giving last week. You know how much we pulled in our offering last week? Over a thousand dollars. Amen. That's because I get condemned because I don't believe in tithing. <laughs> Crazy, right? Good stuff. What was I? So the lamb's blood forgives us of all sins. Church, when you understand that, you don't come condemned. Amen. You know, but the, but you know, people ask me, well, Pastor Larry, you preaching that grace? You no, know, they call they call it greasy grace. You, Pastor Jamie, all about that grace of God. But you know what, Pastor Larry, if you tell people that their life is forgiven and that God's already cleansed all of their life, they're gonna want to go sin. I kind of laugh inside. Because that tells me they've never read their Bible right. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says to him that is forgiven much will love much. Yes. Yes. You know how I know that? Because the Bible says there was a lady that came and washed Jesus' feet with perfume. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the Bible says that the religious people told Jesus, don't you know what kind of woman she is? The life that she's lived? And Jesus says, you know why? That she bathes my feet and she weeps at my feet? Because she's been forgiven much. And then Jesus tells them, to he that is forgiven much will love me much. Amen. 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 You know, we go to church and we hear what? Love God. Love God. Love God. But you can only love God when you realize how much you've been forgiven. Amen. Of your sin. Amen. Amen. See, the old covenant is not like the new covenant. Under the old covenant, how many of y'all know what the greatest commandment in all the law is? The greatest commandment in the law is what? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. And we believe that. That's old covenant. I said that's old covenant. The new covenant, the Bible says what? Love one another as I have loved you. None of us can love the Lord with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength. That's impossible. Because it would take your full mind and life to be submitted to him. Why did God give the law? Why did God give the Ten Commandments? Most people tell you to live holy. Eh, wrong answer. I wish I had a buzzer so I could press it up here. <laughs> I'm going to buy me a buzzer, church. It's wrong answer. The Bible says that God gave the law to show men what sin was mm -hmm. and to make men see that they're guilty before God. Mm -hmm. And yet in our schools today and everything, they're, come, they're saying, we need to put the Ten Commandments right. back in the schools. How many of you are Jewish in here? We all are. Right. But <laughs> about, how many of you are naturally Jews? Nobody. But yet you want to keep the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. 
when the Bible says that the only people that were invited to the Ten Commandments and to the law were the Jews. It's quiet in this church. But <laughs> Are y'all with me? Y'all know why? Y'all know why you're quiet? Because some of y'all have never heard this. Why am I? Why at the end of the day, why are you saying this? Because in church we've been taught so much. You gotta be obedient to God. It's based on your obedience. It's based on are you doing enough? Are you praying enough? Are you taking enough classes in the church to be a Christian? Are you doing the, in church? It's not about your work. The Bible says it's His work. Amen. The Bible says we're saved by grace through faith, not of works. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter two: Lest any man should boast. You don't do anything to earn salvation. You simply receive it. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 As a gift. That's why I don't boast in my work. It's not about I know God hears me because I'm a preacher. See, some of y'all have some y'all ask for prayer for me, and that's great. Me and Jamie, we'll pray for y'all. But a lot of you don't have prayer in your own faith. Come on. Faith in your own prayer. I said it backwards. You know why? Because you think that since my name has on the beginning of it pastor because i have my license on the wall in the office that says i'm, I'm legally a pastor god church listen to me that stuff don't mean anything to god mm -hmm. the only reason why we have a license is because we legally by law have to have those things mm -hmm. but i have the same holy ghost sister mary has i have the same <coughs> holy ghost that hopi has that lives in her yes amen and y'all can all have the death and walk in the and understand the Bible the way I do. You just have to want it. Yes. Right you have to desire it. Amen. You have to pursue it, church. And God, will, I'm not perfect. Y'all don't know my thoughts. You may see my behavior, but you don't know the things that I think. Stanley don't want to know what I think about you, mom. <laughs> you don't. You don't always want to know what people think, but God sees those things. Yes. But yet, God still blesses me. Amen. Even when you're doubting, God still blesses me. Amen. Even when you're over there saying to yourself, I don't know if God really cares about me. Amen. He still pours out goodness on me. Amen. Amen. I've been there. Can't tell me that. There's times I've doubted. When I didn't know if I was going to have the money to pay the bill that I needed to pay. When I got my new electric wheelchair, paid several thousand, but I paid as much as a car on a wheelchair. I didn't know if I was going to have the money. But you know what? God provided the money. Amen. Church, don't tell me God's not good. Amen. And you know what? In my prayer, before I had the money, I would ask God, God, where are you in this? Amen. You said you never leave me. You said you never forsake me. Yeah. But that's doubt. That's unbelief. That's a sin. The Bible says whatever is not a faith is sin. But yet God still blesses us. Amen. What is that telling you, church? It's not my work. It's his work. Amen. 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 I, I challenge you to, to read the Old Testament. Start in the, book of Gen, start in the book of Genesis and read all the way to the book of Exodus. You want something? You, you know, y'all want to read your Bible, learn your Bible, then go home and read those. And when the children of Israel come out of Egypt, they complain, and God blesses them. They murmur, and God blesses them. But then you know what? You know what they tell God, Emma? Give us the law. Give us some rules to obey. And we'll do everything you command us. You know what God says? God says, oh, you want the law? Then stay away from me. Don't come near me. Because if you come near me or if you want you want to live your life based on the rules I'm going to get you, don't come near me. Because if you come near me, I'll kill you. And you know what happens? The Bible says that God gave the Ten Commandments. And immediately after God gave the Ten Commandments, 3,000 of them died. Amen. You know why? Because they broke the first commandment. You shall not have no graven images or idols. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. And they Amen. broke the first commandment. Amen. And you know what? But remember, they already had complained. Mm -hmm. But why did God kill them? Because they wanted the law. That's right. That's right. And God says, you want me to bless you? You want me to assess you? You want me to treat you based on your obedience? Then do it. Let me see you. And they couldn't do it. And yet, that's the way y'all think God treats us. And the, and the problem is churches that God doesn't treat us that way Larry how can you approach God because Christ died for me yeah and his blood makes me perfect amen right. amen oh I know some of y'all don't yeah. like that word because I see y'all putting it on Facebook I'm not a perfect you know what in reality you are perfect because his blood has made you perfect amen, amen. you need to get that in your head yes. yeah you're not perfect in your behavior but the Bible says you can perfectly watch yeah 
by the blood of Jesus. So when we approach God, it takes perfection. Amen. Can I get a good amen? amen. amen. It takes perfection in amen. order to approach God. So how do I approach God if I and myself have no perfection? Only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Man, that's the good news right there. Yes. Amen. That's the gospel. And that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. I love every one of y'all. When I talk to Brother Stanley, RJ and them, you know, one thing they always say is I was always taught works. I was always taught, Pastor Larry, that I had to do it. I had to give up my drinking. I had to give up my smoking. I had to give up all these things. And the truth is, you don't have to give up any of that. Uh-oh. Let me finish my sentence before you already get big-eyed. The truth is, is that God doesn't want you to change for him. He wants to change you. Amen. Amen. And all you have to do is come and receive his word. Let it get inside you and let it bring forth that fruit. Amen. And those things that you once desire, you won't desire them anymore. Amen. Right? But all you have to do is fill your life with Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why I, every day I preach Jesus to y'all. Y'all come over here every week, not every day. But every time you come to church, I preach Jesus to y'all. Because the more you keep your eyes on Jesus, the more you become like Jesus. Amen. But the moment you take your eyes off of Jesus, yeah. you don't, listen, you, a lot of y'all don't see Jesus as a father. You see him as a taskmaster. Mm -hmm. Because you see Jesus demanding right, goodness out of you. Right. Stop doing that. Mm -hmm. Stop going here. Stop talking like that. Stop living like that. And you know what? But a father is someone that embraces. Amen. Amen. And we got to see God as a father. That he loves us in spite of the mistakes that we make. Right. In spite of the things that we've Amen. done. My parents, I was a son. And a lot of y'all know the life that my parents lived. They lived a bad life. They had a hard life. But you know what? I love them. They were my parents nonetheless. Church, if I would do that as a son, how much more would they love me as my parents? Amen. And if my parents would do that in the natural, how much more our Heavenly Father Amen. would Amen. love us? Amen. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. And yet we doubt God so much. I'm trying to build y'all's faith this morning. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I'm trying to get you to stop thinking, like Benny said on Facebook, so get that stinking thinking out of your mind. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to me. The only barrier, man, y'all got to hear this, church. The only barrier between you and God is what you believe about God. Right. And I feel the Holy Ghost just saying Amen. that. Right. Amen. My arms got chills just saying that. Amen. Mm. Because the only way and the only reason why you stop approaching God. Let me say that. The only reason why you stop approaching God is because of your perception of God. Amen. I'm already yeah. getting into my Amen. message. Amen. That's good. And the only reason why you need to learn to change your mind is so you can learn to approach God with faith. Amen. 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 Right. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. Am I preaching good, Brother Edward? Yes, you are. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. The 17th verse. I'm going to help you this morning. Is that all right? Yes. 617 says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Say the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Now, we've been talking about the armor of God. <clears throat> and one of the things I want to talk about is just that one. But we've been going piece by piece, right? Mm -hmm. I should have brought, Jamie has a, in his bedroom, he has a statue that has all the armor of God, all the pieces on it. I should have brought it so y'all can see it. But the Bible says right here that to take on the helmet of salvation. In, in Bible times, they would wear helmets. Why? To prevent them from a blow to the head. Mm -hmm. Even in football, right? Why do you wear a helmet? To, to protect your, your, yeah. your head from a blow, mm -hmm. right? right? Now, listen to me. What the helmet was to the Roman soldier, salvation is to the Christian soldier. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yes. Listen to me, because this is going to help some of y'all. How many of you want victory in your life? Amen. How many of you want to overcome some obstacles? Amen. How many of you want to overcome some habits? Yes. Amen. Oh, what about this? How many of y'all want to overcome some sickness? Amen. Amen. Okay, well, this is what I'm going to tell you. There can be no victory unless the mind is protected by God's word. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Good. Woo. That's good. If you're a smoker, smoke on that for just a little while. Oh, yeah. 
God's, listen, there can be no victory unless the mind is protected by God's word. The reason for that is because the devil hits us hard in our minds. Yes. Amen. Are y'all with me, church? Amen. Think about Adam and Eve. They were made perfect in God's sight. Were they not? Mm -hmm. They were innocent. Mm -hmm. But you know what happened, Jeffrey? The Bible says that the devil came. And what, well, let me back up. The Bible says that God told him, don't partake of this tree. Because the day you take of this tree, you're going to become, your eyes are going to be open and you're going to recognize good and evil. And what did the devil do? The devil started messing with their mind. Mm -hmm. And the devil said, just partake. He, you know what? He even told him, basically, you know why your God doesn't want you to take partake of this tree? Because he don't, he don't want you to be like him. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Amen, Hopi. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, Mary, is they were already like God. That's yes, right. amen. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Yes. And see, that's the way the devil does us. Oh, God's not going to meet your need. You, you better, you know, people that sell drugs, you better start selling your drugs. How are you going to pay your bills? Mm -hmm. God ain't going to come through for you. But you know what? The devil gets us. Because when the devil, we start thinking that way, you know what? We go into defeat. Yes. Are y'all with me, church? Amen. Let me read another scripture to you. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I just read that scripture for opening so y'all can know we're talking about the helmet. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 5. Notice what it says. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Say not carnal. Not carnal. Tell somebody around you, say, I'm not fighting you. I'm not fighting you. That's what carnal means. It means I'm not fighting flesh and blood. I'm not fighting. I'm not against Stanley, even though Stanley's against me. <laughs> I'm getting you today, Stanley. You understand that? I'm not against Mary, and Mary's not against me. My battle is not with Mary. That's what it's saying. That's what it means to be carnal. But mighty in God. For the pulling down of what? Of strongholds. Oh, and you know what? Some some of the super spiritual people, they get all crazy. Yeah, we're going to fight the devil. We're going to get in the airplane and fly over Texas and pull down the strong demonic holes over El Campo. There's people like that out there. I know people that are Christians, Jeffrey, that they wear camouflage and army boots. Because in their mind, they're spiritually fighting the devil. And they'll use scriptures like this. Pulling down strongholds. You know what they say? There's a stronghold over El Campo. Now, I'm not saying that there's not. Don't misunderstand me. But I'm telling you, that's not what the scripture is saying. You know how I know that? Read the next verse. Mm -hmm. Casting down what? Arguments. Arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself. Of what? Against, Against the knowledge of God. Right. Bringing every thought into what? Captivity, Captivity. To the obedience of Christ. Yeah. Put your hand on your head. And say the strongholds, the strongholds are right here. Are right, right here. here. That's it. Mm -hmm. The strongholds are not out there with the devil. Mm -hmm. The strongholds are not your co-workers. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna help some of y'all right now. The Lord just gave it to me. One of the reasons you say, Larry, I have bad co-workers, and I agree with you. You probably do. I can tell you to quit, but you're going to tell me, I can't quit, because how am I going to pay my bills? Come on. Right? Okay. Right. What can we do, Hopi? Change the way you think. That's right. That's Change the way you see that atmosphere. Yes. And then that atmosphere, Crystal, won't affect you no more. That's right. Uh-oh. How come I didn't get no amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Yes. They're in our minds. The strongholds are in our minds. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yes. Amen. amen. Listen to me. Before there is depression, it starts in our minds. Amen. The reason why some of you are depressed is because somehow in your mind you started thinking things. And those thoughts led to depression. Amen. Right. People don't get depressed overnight, church. Right. Something, Somebody sparked something in their mind. How many of you have seen people who are in a broken marriage, in a broken relationship? And you can see it's affecting them. Why? Because the way they're thinking. Some of you can't sleep. Why? 
because you had a million different things going on in your mind. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You start getting sick. A lot of us, uh, listen, a lot of us fight high blood pressure, stuff with our stomachs, mm -hmm. stuff with our heads, because of the way we think. Yeah. That's good. And the devil just bit and blow after blow after blow in your head. And you don't know what to do. I want to say something to you. It says, I want you to notice that it doesn't say bring every thought to obey Christ. Do y'all see that? It doesn't say that. It doesn't say bring every thought to obey Christ. Yeah. First off, that's impossible to do mm -hmm. because we'll always have negative thoughts. That's right. They're always going to hit you negative thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> if you have an NIV Bible, I hope if you have an NIV Bible, forgive me, but the NIV Bible translates it wrong. Because it's not to bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let me read it from the NIV. I have it on my, my, my uh, iPad here. The NIV says it like this. We abolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. Listen to what it says, and it's wrong. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. To Christ. That's impossible. You cannot make it. You'll be living your life crazy. Are y'all with me? Now, just let, help me. Let's, bear with me, church. I'm trying to go somewhere with this. In the Greek, uh-oh, let it go that deep stuff again. In the Greek, the the is in the Greek. Are y'all with me? It's In other words, it's saying bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. In other words, when you have a, 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 a when a thought hits you that says, I think I have cancer. How you know, brother? Because my mama had it this way. And she started off like this. And then you know what? They cut her toe off. And then, then they cut her arm off. You know what you have to do? Bring that thought to God, to the obedience of Christ. What is Christ's obedience? In other words, you say to that thought, I'm not going to get sick because Christ has already provided for my Amen. 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 You focus on his obedience. Amen. In other words, when they say they're going to start laying off everybody at work and you start getting worried and worry starts hitting your mind, you know what you do? You bring that thought to captivity. What, yeah. How do you do it? How do you pull that stronghold in your mind? You say, you know what? No, the Bible says that God will never see his people lack. Yeah. God will never allow his people to go hungry. What are you doing? You're bringing that thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Christ is obedience. <clears throat> Are you understanding what I'm saying? In other words, let's try that. Let's say the things that we do with prayer. When you come up here for prayer and you feel that doubt in your mind and you feel that unbelief that says, I don't have no business up here. That some of y'all won't even come up here and sing. Because you know what you think? I'm not worthy. I don't have my life together. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You need to bring that thought to obedience. How do I do that, Larry? By saying, I am worthy. How? Because God shed his blood for me Amen. through Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Amen. Yeah. That's the way we bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let me let, let me show you another scripture. Go to Matthew 27. Matthew 27. Twenty-seven through thirty-one, Matthew twenty-seven, verses twenty-seven through thirty-one. Look what it says. Then the soldiers and the governors took Jesus into the what? Praetorium. Praetorium. And get my my. I knew it said that, but my uh, iPad changed it. And gathered the whole garrison around him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. When they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head. And a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they mocked him, they took the robe off of him, put his clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. When I was preparing this, Brother Tim, <laughs> the Lord gave me a picture in my mind. I could see the picture as clear as I'm seeing you. 
I want Brother Jonathan to put the picture up there. You know what the Lord told me when I was preparing this message? He said, a lot of the people in your church are like that. Yeah. Their mind is like a prison. Wow. I saw it clear as day. Amen. And you know what, church? We need to stop allowing our minds to come that way. Amen. Because yeah. Jesus bore the crown of thorns Hallelujah. so that you don't have to let things pierce your mind Amen. Right? so you don't have to let depression pierce your mind Amen. so you don't have to let doubt enter in your mind so you don't have to let fear pierce your mind Amen. Yes. are y'all with me church yes. Amen. what are we doing what are we doing with our thoughts I put on Facebook the other day what are you thinking how, how do you see yourself? Listen to me. I'm going to say something very bold. A lot of you in this church, it has nothing to do with your environment. Nothing whatsoever. Listen to your pastor this morning. It's not your environment that's messed up. It's your thinking that's messed up. Amen. Amen. That's why. I have crazy people in my family. They'll pull a knife quick. <laughs> But I'm not like them. Why? Because I don't think that way. That's right. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. I'm not saying that to knock my family. I'm just telling y'all. Some of you, some of you make excuses. I'm violent because my family was violent. I have a bad attitude because my mother has a bad attitude. I don't know how to love my wife because my my father never loved my mother. Now, that may be all true, but when are you going to get sick of living that way right. and repeating that behavior Amen. and start thinking different about yourself right. and about your family and about your life? Amen. Are you with me, church? Amen. Some of us don't have, you know, some of y'all think I have, we have, gen some of y'all are free from the generational curse, but yet you believe in the generational mm -hmm. curse. And in reality, it's not even a curse. It's your thinking. That's right. Amen. Amen. God, I'm, t I'm telling you, it's the truth. Yes, it is. If you would learn to change the way you think and start seeing yourself the way God sees you, yes. mm -hmm. my friend, your life would be a different way. Hallelujah. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not preaching to y'all. I'm preaching to myself because I fight these same things. Why do y'all think it's called spiritual warfare? That's right. Because Amen. that's where the battlefield is at. Amen. The battlefield is right there in your mind. Stop looking for a devil in your husband or your wife or your children and start looking in the mirror. Amen. And start Amen. saying, my mind is out of control. Amen. My thought life is out of control. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Let me show you another scripture. Go with me to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Are y'all blessed this morning? Yes. Luke 4, 18. Now listen. Y'all probably say, oh, Pastor Larry, you say a lot. I'm going to show you scripture. I try not to ever say anything without showing scripture. Are y'all ready? Yeah. In Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus speaking. Mm -hmm. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the what? Broken the broken heart. Heart. To proclaim liberty <laughs> to the captive. And to recover sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are who? Our All right. Now stop. We're going to do Bible study for just a minute. I want you to look at the word brokenhearted. I was studying. The Lord gave me this scripture the other day. And Mary Alice, it was burning in my heart. I knew this scripture. And when we went to the wedding yesterday, Mary, I could not get away from this scripture. It was actually when we were talking the whole time, this scripture was running through my mind. And God says, when you get home, I want you to study the scripture. And as soon as I got home, right, Jamie, I went straight to the office and I said, Jamie, I'm going to go study for just a few minutes. And I read this scripture and I said, Lord, what are you trying to show me? And I couldn't get it, Hopi. And the Lord said, read it again. And I still couldn't get it. And I asked, I, I literally begged, I said, Lord, show me the answer. And the Lord said, I want you to study the Greek word brokenhearted. And the Greek word brokenhearted or the word hearted. 
it's one word, but it's made of two words. The word heart in there is kadar in Greek. Kadar means soul, mind, and emotions. Are y'all with me? Bear with me. You're going to understand what I'm saying. When the Bible says that God came to heal the brokenhearted, he's saying that he came to heal your emotions, your mind, and every part of your soul. Amen. Are y'all with me? And let me say something to y'all. The reason we are hurt emotionally is because we allow something to take root in our minds. Yes. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. A lot of you say, I can't help it. Let me be a little mean. You can. Amen. You start thinking different. Amen. You start believing different. Amen. I'm trying, Larry. And you got to keep fighting. Amen. That's the good fight of faith. Amen. When you don't see it, you keep speaking it. Right. Amen. Amen. I had a brother in the Lord. I knew somebody in the Lord who we had prayed for, Jeffrey. A man. Loved the Lord. To me, he was a man of, if, if I had to put a picture and tell you, if you had to ask me, show me somebody who you would say has, is a man of faith, I would have put that brother's picture in front of your face and said, this man is a man of faith. But you know what? He died of cancer. God healed him and, he, and the cancer came back later. But you know what, Mary Alice? Every time that that cancer would come, he would always say, the Lord is my healer. Yes. The Lord is my healer. On his deathbed, you know what he was saying? The Lord is my healer. Amen. Why? Because he wasn't going to allow thinking to get into his mind. He didn't care what the obstacle was. He was going to, you know what? Bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Is that what we do? Amen? When you look at your checkbook and you see all the checks that you wrote to McDonald's before you paid your bills, <laughs> what are you saying? Do you start panicking? Or do you say, the Lord shall supply all my needs Amen. according Amen. to his riches and glory? Amen. You ever had that happen? You know, you you, you 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 manage your money well, something happens, and then somebody gets sick, and that's another bill on top of the bills you already have. Yeah. And you know what the devil starts doing? He plays with our mind. And you know what happens? Like I said, your mind starts going all kind of crazy ways, and you know what? You start feeling sick. And then they check your blood pressure and what happened? Now you have high blood pressure. And they say you're under stress. So the doctor starts popping, you start popping medication because you're depressed. And in reality, if you would just change the way you think. Yes. Amen. And align your mind with the word of God. Stop allowing things to come into your mind that shouldn't be there. Thank you. Are you with me? Yes. There are different areas of our life that our thinking affects. I'm going to say it again. There are different areas of our life that are affected by the way we think. Are y'all with me? I want you to go with me to Proverbs 23, verse 7. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Amen. Amen. Right. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. It says, for as a man thinketh in his what? Heart, so is he. I want you to put your hand on your head again and say, right here is my heart. Right here is my heart. Uh-oh. Do you know the Greek word for heart and mind are the same word? You know when the Bible says, Jeffrey, to love God with all your heart, it's not talking about right here. It's actually talking about your mind. Because it's one and the same Greek word. Yes. As a man thinketh, so is he. You ever met people that are just mean people? You know why they're mean, Hopi? Because of the way they think. Right. You know why? Because as a man thinketh, so is he. Amen. You ever see people? You ever see people that make more of their sickness than they actually are? Uh-oh. You know why they're like that? Because of the way they think. Pastor Larry, how can you say that? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I'm not saying it. 
The scripture is saying it. As a man thinketh, so is he. Now, don't jump the gun. Some of y'all get, or see, some of y'all already know you're thinking in your mind. Well, Pastor Larry, I think right, but we still get sick. <laughs> I understand that. But I'm talking about your environment and just as a whole. A lot of you are sick because of the way you think. Mm -hmm. And you're a product of what you think. Amen. <laughs> I was talking to somebody, and they were, and, and they were talking about how, how their children their children were just like the mother selfish don't like to help nobody and then I asked them is the mother like that oh yes the mother the way the mother perceives life the sons have perceived that same life why as a man thinketh so is he People used to always tell me in school, and teachers would tell me, you always have a smile on your face. And some of them knew my parents, and they would tell me, your mom and dad lived a hard life. But you always have a smile on your face. And they'll even also tell me, y'all went through a lot as kids. You're right, we did go through a lot. Don't need to tell me. But you know why I had a smile on my face? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. I'm not going to focus on those things. I'm not going to let them bring me down. Amen. I'm going to let God exalt me. Amen. That's why when, when I die, if I die before all of y'all in this room, make sure y'all play that song, I Found a Love Greater Than Life Itself. Amen. Because I really have found a love. And his name is Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. I didn't find religion, church. I found love. Amen. I found the real deal. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And he loves me with an everlasting mm -hmm. love. And he's provided for me. I can write a book of all the good things that I've seen the Lord do in my life. Amen. But you know why I have the you know why I can you know why after everything I've been through I can joke with Stanley and have a good time? Because my thinking is right. Amen. But if my thinking wasn't right, I could be bitter. Mm -hmm. Some of you are older in age. And the loss of your mother or father has still eats you. You know why it does that? Because you're allowing that thinking. And you and it's like you marinate it. And you marinate it. And you marinate it. And you you serenade it. I said I said one time in this church, uh, how many of y'all how many of y'all know how to hold a baby, right? You hold the baby right here, right? And you rock it and you love on it and you kiss it. Right? A lot of you do your problems like that. <laughs> That's good. That's true. Amen. And when God tries to say, "Give me, give me the problem," no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and you and you rub your depression and worry and fear, and you tell the doctor how you need to be on disability <laughs> because you're sick <laughs> and you can't. Get, you, I can barely wake up in the morning. And, Come on, church. Get, come on, we need to get real. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to share something very very honest with y'all. Y'all know I've been battling my stomach, right? I have real bad irritability. Well, as soon as I came through the church today, I was miserable. But I couldn't even focus really on what you were doing with that mic stand because my stomach was, I was focusing on my stomach. And the, the, the doctor did all kinds of tests already, and everything's come back negative. The next thing they want to do on me is a colonoscopy. And... I haven't gone back for the colonoscopy. And let me tell you why I haven't gone back for the colonoscopy. Because I haven't even tried to start eating better yet. <laughs> I'm being real. And try. So why go waste all that money or go pay to have a colonoscopy when I haven't even done the first thing the doctor said? But you know what I can do, Kathy? I can sit there and say, Oh, I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh, and sometimes I do do that. Don't misunderstand. <laughs> we can do that. But in the reality, in the back of my mind, the only person I got to really blame is myself. Right. I'm That's being dead good. honest with y'all. I know I, I know I do want, but it's real. Amen. If Brother Edward would stop bringing me those issues, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Man. I'm just kidding. And you know what? It, what am I saying? Just like the doctor would tell me, if you would just try to eat better, you might feel better. I believe that's what God is saying yes. to us. If we would give that depression to him, yes. 
you might start feeling better. Amen. And church, listen to me. I know I'm being funny and all that kind of stuff, but I'm I'm just trying to tell you is that it's I'm being serious, and at the same time, I want to be compassionate with you. Amen. Y'all know I love y'all. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love every one of y'all in this church, even the ones that are not here and probably watching online. I love them. Amen. And I know that when when I tell you things to let go, it's easier said than done. And I know that because I've been there. I'm just trying to tell you is that I'm just telling you what God says and just take a step of faith. Yes. If you can't release it completely, just start confessing it every day. I'm going to start releasing this to the Lord. Amen. Somebody. Amen. So, so the, one of the ways or one thing that our way of thinking affects is our being right. As a man thinketh, so is he. Let me tell you another thing that it affects. Go to Luke chapter six. Talking about the way we think. What does it affect? <coughs> Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. An evil man out of the treasure of his heart brings forth what? Evil. evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? Speaks. Where's the heart at? Where's your heart? Mine. Mine. You know how a person thinks by the way they speak. Wow. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth. My old pastor used to say it like this. Open your mouth and t let me see what you're thinking. Because you're going to talk the way you think. Mm -hmm. You ever met people, hopefully, that, that, like I always say, they don't find nothing positive. I mean, they got, maybe they got a little shack, Tony. They don't got a big house. They got a little shack. And it's comfortable. But you know what? They want more. This little old house. I mean, we can afford better than this. Are they always finding something that, something that, you know, their husband brings them dinner. And they're like, well, what do you want? Because you don't normally bring me dinner. So I know you want something. <laughs> right? <laughs> Huh. But you know what, church? We start speaking those things into our life. Mm -hmm. Say this with me. Say death, death and life, and life are in the power of the tongue. Are in the power of the tongue. How many of y'all know that's a scripture? Amen. You want to know what's that? You can write it down. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Amen. What are you doing with your situation? Are you speaking life to it or are you speaking death to it? Wow. What are you doing? Are you speaking death to your marriage? Or are you speaking life to your marriage? I'm not saying we can't be transparent at times and say, I'm just going through a lot. It's hard. I understand that. But I'm talking about what is the main thing that comes out of your mouth all the time. Do you spew doubt and unbelief? Or do you spew faith? There's people that I've been around and they are so toxic, the things that come out of their mouth. I'm not talking about cussing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the way they speak. It just makes me cringe. Just like when I see kids disrespect their parents. My aunt would have knocked all my teeth out if I would have talked to her that way, the way some of these kids talk to their parents now. They don't have no respect. But you can see the way they think by the way they speak. Mm -hmm. Listen to your friends around you. What kind of things come out of their mouth? Feel? Talking about nasty girls and all this kind of stuff all the time? Nasty women? What comes out of their mouth? You know why? Because that's the way they think. Okay, let me give you another word. Some of you, I've said this before, but I'm going to share, I'm going to share something with y'all that I've never shared with you. Some of you have this attitude. I just got to have me a drink on the weekends so that I can relax. <laughs> it's been a stressful week, Pastor Larry. You don't understand. You're just at home on Facebook looking at everybody's business while I'm out there working. <laughs> I know some of y'all think. God ain't going to tell me, but that's the way you think. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
if you study the Hebrew or listen to it, because I'm going to help y'all. Because, see, y'all think I just make this stuff up and preach to y'all just to, just to, some of y'all get the perception that it's easy for you to say that, but you're not where I'm at. Okay, I'm not going to talk for y'all. I'm going to let the Bible talk for you, okay? Go home and study the word healing in Hebrew. The root, listen to me, how many of y'all in the school know root words? That you can, in other words, you can trace that word back to another word, right? Where it originated came from. Patrick, the root word for he, uh, healing is relax. And who is your healing? Jesus. And what is the root word for healing? Jesus. I mean, relax. So who is your relaxation? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I'm trying to help y'all this morning. Amen. Amen. But you know why you think that that drink or that drugs or those cigarettes or sex with girls or whatever is going to fix that? It's because that's the way you think. Right. Right. Go home and go. Don't believe me? Go home and buy you a Bible dictionary and look up the word healing in the Hebrew and, the, and study its word out to its root word. And it means relax. Some of you can never get healed because you don't relax about your situation. Mm -hmm. You're too tense about your sickness. You're too stressed about it. <clears throat> relax. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let God take care of it. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Now, the third one. It's Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 through 22. Go ahead, Jonathan, put it on the board. And you, who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now has been reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. Notice what it says in verse 21. You who were once alienated where? And enemies in your mind. mind. Do you know what the, this verse is saying? It's saying this. If you study it, God was never against you. You were always an enemy of God in your mind. Mm -hmm. Some of us see God as our enemy. I'll give you an example. Some of you lost loved ones. Lost a job. And you know who you blame? God. God. Why did God have to allow that wreck to happen from my parents? I could say that. And you know what? God becomes my enemy. Are y'all with me, church? Yes. Amen. We think he's the reason why we're going through troubles. He's the one that's bringing hell into our life. And you know how we justify that? This is the way we justify it. God controls everything, so he's the one, you know, since God controls everything, he's allowed, he, he's the one that's bringing this into my life because God, the Bible says God controls everything. The Bible never says that. I'll give you an example. If God controls everything and every, anything that God wants, he gets because he's God. The Bible says, Jeff, that it's not God's desire that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. Now, let me ask you a question. Does everybody die saved? No. no. So what does that tell you? God's will is not always done in our lives. Right. Yeah. Our favorite Bible story, a lot of us that are going through hell, is Job. Job lost his family and everything in one day. But, you know, the truth is, is that Job blamed God. Yeah. And the truth is that the devil was the one that was behind it. Mm -hmm. Right. How many of y'all know that, that song? Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful. Blessed be your name. It goes, you give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. You need to turn that song off. Because <laughs> God's not taking it from you. The devil is. Amen. And let, listen to me. You know who said that? The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, which Job said that. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Job was the one that said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But at the end of the, the whole story of Job, God says, why have you falsely accused me? Yeah. I never took anything from you. Amen. Mm, that's good. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
I'm telling you, we, we need to start studying our Bibles. Not everything you hear on KSBJ is biblical. Come on. Uh-oh. I'm not an enemy of KSBJ, I'm just telling you. Right. Come on, church. Why is it that? It, 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 it's like, so-and-so, you know, it, you, uh, I can hear a, a contemporary singer sing a Christian song. You know, you'll see uh, Beyonce sing uh, Amazing Grace. But yet, the next song, she's bumping and grinding on the stage. And y'all, see, and some people sit there and say, well, she loves God because she sang Amazing Grace. That don't mean anything. That don't mean she's a Christian. Amen. Just because your favorite Spanish uh, song band sings <laughs> Un Dia La Vez <laughs> doesn't mean... <laughs> I'm messing with Brother Edward. The, Brother Edward knows that. He doesn't believe that. I'm just messing with him. But I'm just saying, just because your favorite uh, Tejano band sings Un Dia La Vez doesn't mean that they're Christian. Right. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Amen. What I'm trying to say is that you, we need to look at things. We sing songs like that. The Lord, He gives and takes away. I, I've heard of a song in church. Mm-hmm. Worship bands sing it. And yet don't even think about where those words came from. When Job was the one that said that. And then God turns around and rebukes Job for saying that. Mm-hmm. Church, church, that's why I, y'all, in this church, you know, people will say, like Jamie said, y'all spend a lot of time teaching in this church. I'm a pastor and I'm a teacher. I'm not a prophet. I'm not an evangelist, and I'm not an apostle. But I'm a pastor teacher. A pastor what? Because I have a flock. Y'all are all my flock that I'm required to watch over and to be there for. It's my job to be there for you, Brother Edward, when you need me. Because I'm supposed to be a shepherd. But I'm also a teacher. Because when y'all listen to me, that's why I say the Greek word says this. The Hebrew says this. The original language says that. Because I'm called to be a teacher. If you don't want to listen to a teacher... Go somewhere else. Joe Osteen is not a teacher. He's an evangelist. He's a pastor. But he's not a teacher. Because I've never heard him say the Greek word says this. And that's okay. We're all called it. I'm just telling you is that don't compare me to somebody else or uh, uh, this church to somebody other church. Because we're a teaching church. My cousin Rachel, who's not here today, one day she told me, people will never learn to love your church that you and Jamie pastor unless they enjoy teaching. Right. Because y'all are a teaching church. And if people just want a simple, pretty message just to feel good and go home about, then they're in the wrong church. Mm-hmm. But you know, let me tell you something. You go to churches like that, and then you start singing songs like, Blessed be your name, and he gives and takes away. And the reason why you sing things like that is because you don't sit under teaching. Right. To learn your Bible, to see what the Bible says. Mm-hmm. Are y'all with me? Mm-hmm. Yes. Let me read through my scriptures. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Guard your heart, Crystal. Don't let, listen to me. I'm going to give some relationship advice. Don't let people that you meet, let them in so quick. That's right, amen. Because then they hurt you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what you gotta do, Aunt Kathy? Guard your heart mm-hmm. with all diligence. Some people you have to love from a distance. Can I get a good amen? Yes. Amen. 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 You know what? <laughs> you gotta guard that temper that might rise up in you, amen? amen. <laughs> that old man might try to come back. Like, <laughs> That's true. Let me read it from the New Living Bible. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Everything I've been telling y'all today. I'm going to read it again from the New Living. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Amen. Now, don't tell me my message is not biblical because I just proved it to you. The way you think will determine the course of your life. It will. Let me read one more scripture and I'll close. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, 
putting on the breastplate of faith and love, mm -hmm. and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. salvation. Say hope. 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 How many of y'all know what hope is? I taught y'all this on Thursday night one day, the word hope. The word hope is not like man hope. I hope I get the job. I mean, I applied, but Dairy Queen ain't call me back. <laughs> Walmart ain't call me back. Hey man, Los Cucos ain't call me back to be a server yet. That, that's hope, right? That's, that's man hope. Yeah. But the word for hope in the Bible is the Greek word elpis. Elpis means a confident expectation of good. Mm -hmm. So when you say you have Bible hope the way the Bible says the hope, it's I'm expect I'm gonna get that job. I'm expecting to get that job. I'm expecting to get that promotion. Mm -hmm. You ain't got it yet, but you're hoping, right? It's a right. it's an, a confident, a sure expectation. <coughs> it's gonna work out. Yeah. Amen. Now notice what it says to put on as a helmet the what? The hope of salvation. In other words, have a confident expectation of good in your mind. Right. Expect good, God, church. Expect that God will give you good. Amen. Expect that he loves you enough that he wants to pour out blessings. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. Jeff, and what's your other friend's name? Harold. Daryl? Harold. Harold? Harold. Harold. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. Let me tell you what that means. Repentance means to change your mind about God. Most churches, they're going to bash you. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to be living like this. But if, but if I just present God's goodness to you and just show you that God wants to be good to you, it will cause you to change. Yes. Because the goodness of God yes. leads. How many of you get sick and tired of going to churches and they're always beating you? Putting you down. Y'all understand that? Yes. Not giving enough money in the offering. You understand what I'm trying to say? And here, I don't want to do that to y'all. I want to lift you. Hallelujah. A true leader is a servant that washes people's feet. Amen. Amen. And my job is to make sure that you have everything you need in Christ. Amen. And your job this morning is to put a confident expectation of good in your mind. Amen. Amen. I'll leave you with this. One of the ways that you're going to overcome bad thinking is to start reading this. Start reading this, church. The Bible. The Bible that we put on the screen is the New King James. It might be too hard for some of y'all. Get you the New Living. It's as English as clear as day. Yes. There's no excuse. You want to learn your Bible? Come on Thursday nights. I promise you, you'll learn. Crystal told me the other day, she says, Melina, she says, in my old church, it took me like two, three services to write one page of notes or something like that. She said, when I come here, I write three pages of notes in one sitting. <laughs> you know what that tells me? That means, that means we're giving her something to feed on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says that God's word is life. Say life. 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 And health. And health. health. To your body. To wow. your body. Yes. Amen. You know, life, you know what I'm talking about? Life, I'm talking about when you, how many of you ever felt like life is good? Uh, the other day we were sitting outside. I, I, I think I was sitting with somebody outside. And I just, it, it was a beautiful day. The sky was blue and I just felt good. I was like, life is good. I have everything I need. Right. You know how I might feel good? It was when you know this. That God never leave me, never forsake me. You need health? Get in the word. Why? The Bible says in Proverbs, God's word is health to all those that find it. Listen, find it. You have to search it That's right. and find healing in that word. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Let's stand to our feet. Are y'all?